In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle on them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who just instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost. Grant us by the gift of the same spirit, that we may be truly wise, and ever rejoice in his consolation, through the same Christ our Lord, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Pius X, pray for us, seen as a door of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, my dear faithful, um, last time I spoke to you about the Annunciation of Our Lady and how we can see in the Annunciation that Our Lady had certain trials, um, some certain temptations that were presented to her by the angel Gabriel, and in the sense, not that he was tempting her to sin, but, but he was setting up a situation where she could easily fail um, by taking the flattery and her not losing, losing her, her um, proper self-possession by her passions being inflamed and not making the right choices. Um, and how she, she passed that test and immediately after um, she became the mother of God, she, she more or less merited to take on that role as mother of God. Um, through exhibiting prudence, humility, uh, chastity, and temperance, um, and obedience in the, that conversation that she had with, with St. Gabriel. So um, I, I really wanted to do a follow-up conference and, and, um, about St. Joseph, how something is similar to St. Joseph, that St. Joseph had a trial. We, this is where it, <laughs> It's, it's not just Father Robinson saying it now, but it's actually, we, we often refer to the trial of St. Joseph. I, I don't know of anybody referring to the Annunciation as a trial. That's, that's just sort of my particular perspective on it. But um, there are many who refer to a trial of St. Joseph. And um, in my mind, if we, if we ask ourselves why uh, St. Joseph had to undergo this trial again, it was um, in order to prepare him for the greatness of his role, in order to uh, test him in a certain way for this incredible role that he was to undertake, and then to reward him, um, his fidelity um, for uh, undergoing this trial well in a supernatural way. Um, and then finally to manifest to all of us his virtue and his worthiness that he was someone who should have been chosen by God to, to be the foster father of our Lord. So um, again, this is this is a lesson to us that that um, in the trials that we experience, it may be w w if we um, have a trial that it may be a preparation for something greater in the plan of God. That insofar as we're able to handle the trial with uh, proper virtue, um, that we're, we're able to make the the right choices, we're able to to discern well in the time of trial, and not just um, fly off the handle and, and follow our passions. Um, then perhaps um, us performing well under grace in that time of trial is a preparation for something greater that, that God is calling us to later in our life. So what we have to consider here um, on this last day of March, which, which is, of course, the month of St. Joseph. So I'm, I'm just, just getting in there um, before the end of the month to, to speak to you about St. Joseph. Um, what we have to consider is what happens after the Annunciation to Our Lady. Of course, from that moment, she is with child. At the same time, she is uh, betrothed to, to St. Joseph. And um, the first thing we have to notice is, is that Our Lady um, remains silent uh, about um, the fact that she is expecting and the, the fact um, that she's expecting by the Holy Ghost that she's the mother of the Messiah. And we may ask ourselves, I mean, why, why doesn't Our Lady tell St. Joseph uh, about the, the fact that she's with child? I mean, it seems like he should know. Um, and there's, there's a couple of reasons that <clears throat> we could give for this. Um, again, we, by asking ourselves this question, why didn't Our Lady tell St. Joseph about the fact that she was expecting our Lord? We can discern the virtue of Our Lady. Um, we, we can see how she was very prudent, um, that she measured her decisions. And she was, you know, you, you would think that, that a woman who um, had become the mother of God and, and was now, knew herself to be 
that the expectant mother of the Messiah would be very anxious to share that news with everybody, say, you know, to her friends and family um, and, and to her future husband that, um, you know, um, she had had an interview with an angel and the angel told her that she was the best woman ever um, and that she was going to give birth to a child. She was the name, his name is Jesus. Um, and that he was to be the son of the most high and, and so on and so forth. And finally, the Messiah is going to come after all these thousands of years of waiting for him. Um, you know, I mean, this is, this is what we would definitely expect um, a woman who did not have the same virtue as Our Lady to do. Um, yet this is, this is not what Our Lady did at all. Again, she kept uh, a very discreet silence. Just as we want to admire the silence of Our Lady, after she hears those words of the angel Gabriel, uh, hail full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and be in admiration, total admiration at her silence at that moment. So too, we, we should be in admiration at her silence after the Annunciation, the fact that she's not telling anybody, um, even with her cousin Elizabeth, her cousin Elizabeth um, has a revelation of the Holy Ghost. And, and that's how cousin Elizabeth finds out about it. So why wouldn't, why wouldn't Our Lady tell uh, St. Joseph? Um, well, for, for one reason, um, it's, it was clear to Our Lady that this was a supernatural mystery um, that was not in her possession, um, that this is, this is really uh, God's plan and, and God's secret, uh, that if God had told her that, that uh, she could tell everybody, then she would have permission. But just as when you, you, you guard someone's secret, if someone tells you something privately um, and you realize that it's a secret, even if they don't tell you, you know, keep this hush hush, you don't, don't tell anybody, um, you, you would be careful if you respected that person not to tell their secret. Well, there's something similar here. Um, Our Lady realizes that this is not really um, a secret that she owns. That, that belongs to her, but it's really God's secret. And so it's just not her business to tell whoever she wants, whenever she wants. Um, rather, she has to keep the secret. No doubt also is second reason why, why Our Lady would, would not go to St. Joseph and, and tell him um, is the fact that, well, it would be absolutely impossible for Our Lady to substantiate what, what she was saying. Um, so if she went to St. Joseph and said, look, here's, here's what happened. Okay, so, um, you know, pay attention. First of all, an angel appeared to me, um, and then he, he told me that I was a wonderful woman um, and, and that the, the Lord had chosen me among all women to be the, the mother of his son, and that I was to be the mother of God. Um, and then when, when I said yes to this plan, um, God um, overshadowed me, the Holy Ghost overshadowed me, and I became pregnant in, in that way. Um, so, yes, this, this would, I mean, we, we can imagine that the St. Joseph would, would, would need a bit more than Our Lady's word, and um, it would just set up a situation um, of, of some doubt, and, uh, unless, unless Our Lady had a, a way to, to prove definitively that that is what happened. So, um, our Lady very prudentially did not um, speak to St. Joseph about it. Um, and uh, St. Joseph couldn't claim an absolute right to, to know um, since it was, it was done by the power of God. So really Our Lady understood that, that it was God's decision, not her own as to when um, St. Joseph would be told and, and how he would be told. Um, she left this in the providence of God, and she understood very clearly that this was um, not something for her to decide. This was, this was something for God to decide. Um, you know, unlike Rebecca, Rebecca, you know, you know Rebecca and, and Isaac, um, Rebecca kind of knows that her son Jacob is to be given the, the rights of the firstborn. Um, but she, Rebecca doesn't wait for, for God to fulfill that promise. Um, Rebecca just steps in and has her son Jacob <clears throat> effectively lied to his father about him being the firstborn um, and, and get the first birthright. So, so Rebecca sort of anticipates the providence of God and steps in, um, kind of saying to God, like, look, you're not, you're not moving things forward quickly enough. Um, I'm going to step in now. But Our Lady is, is not an, an Old Testament figure. There's a lot of flaws in Old Testament figures. She's a New Testament figure. So um, Our Lady 
um, acts absolutely perfectly here. She does not anticipate the providence of God. Um, and again, we have to admire not just her prudence, but her submission to the providence of God. Um, she's not anxious. She's not hasty. She's not saying, you know, this, this needs to be run, done right away. And we might expect that she, she would be very worried because uh, a woman who was fine with child uh, under Jewish law when she was betrothed to, a, to another man um, and would, could be stoned. I mean, could, could receive the capital punishment. So for the crime of, of adultery. Um, so we can imagine that, that Our Lady uh, was very, very trusting of the goodness of God and that he would take care of her um, and that, that things would turn out all right. I mean, um, yet at the same time, we, we, we have to, to see that, that God, again, um, did not act immediately. And this, is, this is what we, we really, really have to think about um, when we consider this, this situation. Um, we have to really reflect uh, about this. That this, is, this is a decision of God himself. Once Our Lady uh, realizes uh, that, that it's, it's not for her to say, and it's really for God to decide how and when uh, St. Joseph would be told and anybody else would be told, um, then we, we have to say, um, why did God wait to tell St. Joseph when he did? Um, especially we have to ask, why not earlier? Um, we may say that, that God waited until the very last minute. Um, so first of all, um, Our Lady had advanced far enough in her pregnancy such that it was evident that she was pregnant. And all during that time, I mean, surely there's, there's probably at least three months have gone by, um, and all during that time, um, God could have sent a, an angel. God can send an angel at any time he wants. I mean, there's, there's no problem with him sending an angel. Um, that's not a difficulty for God. But God doesn't want to send an angel at the very beginning. He doesn't want to send one the first month or, or the second month or the third month. He, he, he wants to wait. He wants to wait until um, St. Joseph is able to notice that Our Lady is with child. Um, and he wants this because he wants St. Joseph to experience a trial. This is the only thing that we can say. This is really um, the conclusion we must draw. If God wanted to wait, and this was going to cause a trial of St. Joseph, then he wanted St. Joseph to have a trial. There's, there's really no other way to look at it. And, and again, this is um, uh, uh, evidence to us that, that um, Sometimes we are meant to experience trials. It's in the providence of God for us to experience trials. And um, when we see the fruits that come to St. Joseph and uh, the virtue that he manifests, we, we conclude that the trials are meant for our good, that we, we look at St. Joseph as a perfect example of how to endure trials. Um, and it was, a, it was a very great trial for St. Joseph. Um, again, think, think about what's going on in the mind of St. Joseph um, when he notices that Our Lady is expecting. He, he sees that, that she's pregnant and what confusion this must have caused in his mind. Um, how anguishing it, it must have been. What, what an anguish it must have caused his soul to see that, that she was with child. He, he um, I think we have to understand, first of all, that that he loved Our Lady very much, um, and that he was looking with anticipation upon the moment when he would take her to be his wife and, and they would begin living together. Um, and so it must have hurt him very much to see that Our Lady was with child. And yet we see in St. Joseph um, a supreme virtue in, in the midst of this trial um, one thing we notice is, is that St. Joseph does not um, go to Our Lady and speak to her. Um, that's one way in which we see that he has a very great respect for Our Lady. Um, he, he doesn't feel like he should approach her about this or accuse her. 
Um, this is how we know that, that St. Joseph um, is not Italian. Um, he, he's definitely not Italian. Of the, you, know, you, you may know uh, that uh, in the Dante's Divine Comedy, um, when, when the, in, the, in the fifth canto of the Inferno, um, Dante meets uh, Paolo and Francesca, and um, yeah, basically um, Paolo's uh, brother was married to Francesca, and then uh, Paolo, um, uh, Paolo's brother one time found Paolo and Francesca uh, committing adultery, and uh, he was Italian, and, and he came in and he, he killed them both. Um, and of course, they, they both went to hell as a result. Um, so uh, this is the Italian way to deal with, with uh, people being caught in, in adultery, uh, especially if, if you're the husband. So um, St. Joseph, thankfully, was, was not Italian. Um, no, no offense to, to Italians who may be watching this, but um, so um, St. Joseph is, is, uh, is, is very um, prudent, uh, very just, and he's very respectful for Our Lady. So, so he doesn't go to Our Lady and accuse her of, of being impure. Uh, he knows she's a wonderful woman and that, um, yes, that um, she would not have committed such um, a terrible sin. So given that, given that, that, that um, he knows that she, she had to, to be innocent of whatever happened, she, she had to be innocent of any crime, he has to make a difficult decision. Um, so St. Joseph is, is thinking about this in his mind. Uh, here's here's what, what scripture says. Um, when Mary, his, his mother, had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. But Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wishing to expose her to reproach, was minded to put her away privately, but while he thought on these things. So, so St. Joseph is reflecting for surely a, a while on, on what to do in this situation. Um, the law would command that, that he turn her in um, and, and have her brought to justice, but he's convinced that she's, she's innocent of, of any crime. He doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to expose her to reproach, is what, is what Scripture says. Um, he's not bitter. Um, and at the same time, he's, he's not going to say, well, you know, I will just take her anyway um, to be my, my wife. Um, he has to come to a very difficult decision that on the one hand, he's, he's not going to expose her to reproach by submitting her to, to the, the judgment of the Sanhedrin. Um, and on the other hand, um, he's not going to take her for, for his wife. So very, very difficult decision for St. Joseph to make. And um, he finally concludes he's going to have to give her up, um, let her go away privately, basically um, give her back. To, to her parents or, or whoever, um, have her live by her, herself. Um, so there, we can think about this, this time of, of, of St. Joseph um, pondering over these things and, and how difficult it was and how he surely must have, have prayed to, to God for light um, and how he had to master his own passions and his own desires in order to make the, the right decision, a, a very, very difficult decision he finally comes to um, the perfect conclusion uh, that, that he's to put her away privately. So um, this is what, what he does. He's, he's made the decision. And um, at that point, that's, that's, when, that's, that's God's perfect time. That now now that St. That Joseph has passed the trial, that's the, the moment when he passes the trial, when, when he uh, decides that he's going to put our Lady away privately. He's he's not going to take revenge. He's he's not going to kill Our Lady. He's 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 not going to expose her to reproach. Uh, he's he's not going to um, have her condemned by the Sanhedrin. He's not going to take her for his wife. He's he's going to put her away privately. It's at that moment. It's at that moment once he's he's passed the test and so proven that he's a man of very great virtue. Scripture says, 
because he was a just man, being a just man. He wanted to put it away privately. So it's at that moment that he proves himself worthy to be the foster father of our Lord. He, he proves um, that, that he is a man of very great virtue and worthy to be chosen by God. And it's at that point that, that God sends his angel. He could have sent his angel at any time, but he waits until the moment when uh, St. Joseph goes through this entire process of deciding what to do in this moral dilemma. So here's what, what scripture says. Um, while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Do not be afraid, Joseph, son of David, to take to thee Mary thy wife, for that which is begotten in her is of the Holy Spirit. And he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So this is the, um, the moment when St. Joseph, it's revealed to him that Our Lady is to be the mother of the Messiah. I just want to put up um, a picture of St. Joseph here, a beautiful painting of St. Joseph. Um, so there's St. Joseph with, with the fruits of him passing this trial because he, he passed the trial. He's, he's able um, to be chosen to be the foster father of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a glorious role and how St. Joseph's soul must have been filled with joy at hearing these incredible tidings from the angel that um, the child that, that Our Lady was expecting is from God, um, that she was still a virgin, that she had not been defiled by any man, um, but that it was God himself who had caused her to conceive a son and that this son was to be the one who would be our redeemer, who would save um, his people, God's people from their sins. What, what a joyful tidings this must have been to St. Joseph, but he would have never heard those tidings if he had not responded in the way that he did because he was uh, so faithful to grace in that moment um, so in control of himself, um, not overreacting to the, the fact that he saw Our Lady to be with child, and that, that after a period of deliberation, he came to the, to the right choice. So he was, he was chosen by God to be the foster father of our Lord, um, and he received the, the, the very wonderful um, benefit, the, the very wonderful reward from that of being able to live his life in the company of our Lord and Our Lady. What, what a very great blessing uh, for St. Joseph. So I, I think St. Joseph is definitely a very great example for us in, in this time of trial about how we should endure our trials, um, how trials once more can be a um, preliminary step towards the accomplishment of something greater in our life. It, it's it's a step where we prove ourselves to God that if we um, behave ourselves and we, we act with supernatural prudence, supernatural virtue in a time of trial, perhaps that means that, that later on God will ask us to do even greater things. Perhaps it's, it's a preparation and trials can be preparations for greater things. Um, perhaps the, the, the trial we're experiencing with the coronavirus is something like that. Perhaps um, God is looking at us and he's saying, how will my children endure this trial, whether it be the, the deprivation of mass, the deprivation of, of their job, perhaps a loss of, of family members, um, deprivation of schools, all these, all these trials, how will they endure it? Will they respond with a, a similar holiness and virtue as St. As Joseph? Um, so on this last day of, of the month of, of St. Joseph, last day of March, let us um, take strength from from St. Joseph's example, um, the trial that he experienced was surely very great, uh, yet he showed such strength and, and such calm reserve in carefully discerning what the will of God was in that situation. And we can also take confidence in the goodness of God. We see 
uh, what a wonderful reward <clears throat> God gave to St. Joseph um, by making him the foster father of, of our Lord and, and the spouse of his virgin bride, Our Lady, um, as a result of, of his fidelity to the will of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. <clears throat>